Hello everyone. I'm jumping on a little bit early. If you've been on Facebook, maybe you've noticed that Facebook has a new um, a new look to it. Do you guys have you seen that at all? And <laughs> I'm not really sure what it's going to do with my lives, so that's why I thought I'm going to come on here a little bit early and see what it looks like and I saw I could schedule them now but then I realized it might put it on my computer and not my phone so but welcome it's Nicole Steele I'm the owner um, and the creator and designer behind the Joyful Stamper brand and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern time I go live right here on my page so if you're joining me live or you're watching the replay welcome and thank you so much for spending some of your day with me I so appreciate it I love stamping I love creating I love talking to others hello Sharon hi Lissa <laughs> Lissa I hope you're having a really good week now I saw your otter pictures your otter posts the other day and that one face you were <laughs> it made me laugh <laughs> so I hope you're smiling now so, okay, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to see everybody. So let's do a little housekeeping stuff. And then what I have planned today is watercoloring on an embossed piece of cardstock. Um, it is so pretty. And embossing folders, we're going to use the Ornate Floral 3D embossing folder. And the things you can do with these things is amazing. It's more than just running them through your machine and making a pretty picture on your cardstock. So we're going to do something pretty with it. Um, oh, you're right. oh, thanks, Alyssa. You know what? Doing these Facebook lives gives me great motivation to paint my nails and keep them in good shape. So because otherwise, I mean, with all the cooking and the cleaning and the laundry and they get pretty yucky, but it feels really good to have painted nails, you know, it doesn't last very long, but they look good on camera, right? <laughs> okay. So let me pull out my catalog. I'm going to show you all the embossing folders that Stampin' Up! has. And some of them are 3D, some of them are standard, but we've got a lot of 3D ones. And they are gorgeous. And there's so many different techniques you can do with them. So today we're going to explore watercoloring the ornate floral floral 3d embossing folder but other ones I like on here um I like that dainty diamonds one I just got the tasteful textile 3d that one is actually tops if you had to pick one folder to get that is the one I would get and then the second one I would get would be the one we're using today pinewood planks oh could you imagine the poinsettia set die cut some poinsettias stamp them and put them on a, an embossed pinewood planks piece of paper oh my goodness okay we're getting off track here so let's focus focus Nicole focus all right um, housekeeping before we start a paper pumpkin kit the September one fall this looks adorable look at that box guys so if you like kits if you like to create but you don't want to um, collect a lot of supplies if you create on the go the sign up for this one is the deadline is September 10th and you'll get this cute little box and on my blog I have a special page just for paper pumpkin and it always will tell you what the following month's kits going to be um, I post the colors and a little color swatch there and I tell you what the kits gonna make so this one is cracker um, cracker box treat packages but Stampin Up has said that if you don't want to make those treat packages, you can easily turn them in traditional fall themed Thanksgiving and Halloween cards. So don't overlook this just because you think I don't like 3D projects or what am I going to do with that treat packaging. You can still make cards with this kit. Stampin' Up! always sends out an email to the Paper Pumpkin subscribers and shows alternate projects and with the instructions on how to make those alternate projects. So I'm loving this. I think this is going to be a good kit. Also starting September 1st, Get and Go Starter Kit Promotion. So this is about signing up to be a demonstrator, and you don't have to do it as a business, okay? People think that. That's a common misconception. You can do what I do and sign up to get the discount. 
I turned it into a business because I realized people love this stuff and it just kind of happened and I really enjoy this. So if you're interested in being a part of my team, the Joyful Stamper team, just shoot me an email and I will answer any questions you have. But the sign up special starts September 1st. It's going to run the whole month, but you get to pick $125 of product of your choice and it's just $99. You don't even have to pay shipping on that. The special you get these two stamp sets here, Queen Anne's Lace and So Much Love, a package of rhinestones, and you get a pre-cut cardstock pack to make 16 cards. Stampin' Up's also going to send you a flyer that has a link showing you their sample cards that they made with these products. So this is worth $50. So you're going to get a kit worth $175 for just $99 and no shipping. So think about that. And here's an idea. If you want the new stamp and cut and emboss machine, that's $120. You can put that in your starter kit, throw in a package of Stampin' Dimensionals, they're my favorite adhesive, and you're gonna get this add-on kit. Okay, that's a good idea. So just think about it. Let me know if you're interested. All right, now let's do what we came here to do and let's stamp. So just sit back and relax because we're gonna do some watercoloring. And watercoloring is so, so relaxing. So I have my pieces cut and ready to go. I think you're gonna like this card. All right, I have my 3D embossing folder. Now a 3D embossing folder is a little bit thicker than a standard embossing folder. And what that's going to do is give us a super deep impression. So let me pull out my stamp and cut and emboss machine. If you have questions or comments, I'm watching, so just throw them up there for me. Now, I'm going to be, since I'm using a 3D embossing folder, I'm using this sandwich right here. It's printed right on the base plate. So I'm going to start with my base plate. I'm going to have my embossing folder with my cardstock inside of it. And I'm going to close it. I'm going to put it with the hinge side feeding into the machine first. And I'm going to put base plate four. This is the specialty plate on top. And now I'm just going to roll it through. Now if you have hand problems or arthritis or anything like that, this machine actually turns really, really easy. I know manual machines are a problem um, for people that have hand issues like that. This machine was so easy to turn and glide it through. The rollers were designed to just pull it right through with minimal effort. So the stamp and cut emboss machine would be a good choice for you. So, okay, so I've embossed that. And can you see that deep impression? Yeah, I was really impressed with that. All right, I'm gonna pull out a piece of chipboard. So when I watercolor, I save the chipboard backing from the designer series paper packs, especially the specialty ones. They come with these and they make a good surface for water coloring. Now what I'm going to do is I'm using Blackberry Bliss. Let's see if I make, make sure I'm in camera. Blackberry Bliss, terracotta tile, and old olive. Okay, use those three colors. You can either squeeze free inker into the lid of your open stamp pad or you can flip them upside down and squeeze them give them a press and what that will do is deposit ink into the lid of your ink pad so there we've got terracotta tile old olive and blackberry bliss those colors look really good together and now I'm gonna take I have an aqua painter um, what's in the catalog now is called a water brush. It's the same concept. You unscrew them, you can fill the barrel with water, and then when you squeeze them, um, water will come out of the tip. And that way you don't have to worry about dipping into a jar. But here's the thing, you can still fill up a jar of water and use this um, by dipping it in that too. So I'm going to pick up some Blackberry Bliss, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dab it on these little flowers randomly. I'm gonna make some of them Blackberry Bliss. And I'm not gonna worry about being very precise. That is the beauty of watercoloring, 
is you don't have to worry about staying in the lines. You don't have to worry about getting exact shading. You just paint, paint and play. And that's what makes it so relaxing is because you don't have to think too hard about it. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I create, I try, sometimes if, you know, if I have like a block, I try to force the ideas and that never ever works. I'm never happy with what I make when I do that and then I just get disgusted and walk away but I don't know when you're watercoloring you can get in the zone you can put a movie on you can put your favorite tunes on you can have a conversation with somebody and it's just a happy way to spend some time so I'm gonna fill up this card not with the Blackberry Bliss I'm gonna bring in some other colors but I'm just gonna go around it just like this and I'll probably add a few more later okay now to clean this I you can take a paper towel I keep this old dish towel on my desk and just squeeze out the water and run this back and forth until the you don't see any more ink coming off and then you're ready to switch colors so now I'm gonna move to terracotta tile and I'm gonna add some water in there so do you I know there's there was a hurricane that came through Louisiana I think it was in Texas I don't really follow the news all that much but when I go to the Y in the morning they have the TV monitors right in front of me and so I saw it so I saw it was a pretty big storm it was it category 4 category 5 here's the thing though the weather channel guys <laughs> it's I mean it's not entertaining that people's property and homes are getting destroyed but I find that weather people's reactions and behavior in these storms to be entertaining. I remember one time I was on vacation and what was it Hurricane Irma or I can't remember it was 10 years ago 15 years ago came up the Atlantic coast and I was in Hilton Head Islands it didn't hit us but we got waves and stuff and I sat there and scrapbooked into the wee hours in the morning and watched Jim Cantore brave the elements getting blown around and buffeted and knocked every which way by the hurricane winds and I thought I know he doesn't delight in people's suffering and all that but he really loves the weather and he's crazy he's crazy do you guys ever watch the weather channel for entertainment my husband and I used to do that Alexander Steele was on there Jim Cantori, um, I don't know who's on there now. I haven't watched it lately. So I'm using terracotta tile to color in some other flowers. And you can fill this in as much as you want. You can leave white space. It's, it's all okay. So yeah, so if you're on here live, talk to me. Type in some comments. Despite having a house full of um, kids and husband and dog, it's still pretty quiet around here. You would th think three teenage girls talk a lot, but no, not to their mother. Every now and then they do, but just like creativity, you can't force the conversation with teenagers, right? You guys have teenagers? Have you raised teenagers? I'm going to go back and I'm going to add some more Blackberry Bliss, so I'm going to change this. I feel like I should have some music playing. If you have a stamping story, I'm curious how you guys discovered stamping and paper crafting. Can you like type your story in the comments? If you just tell me like how long you've been doing this, um, did you ever take a break and then come back to it? Have you brought somebody else over to the stamping dark side? got them obsessed with paper and stamps and ink. I'm just looking at all the little flowers here, making sure I get them all. Although I missed some on my original card. Now I'm going to go back to terracotta tile and that's, I'm just really eyeballing this. There's no rhyme or reason. I'm just looking. We're going to add some old olive here in a minute and we're going to do the leaves. Did I miss any? Am I missing any? Oh, I have to tell you what I made last night. 
while we're chatting because <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to friends here. Um, I made a beet cake, a chocolate beet cake. Did you know you could do that? I bought some beets at the farmer's market and they were sitting in my fridge and I remembered this cake I used to make when my oldest daughter had dairy allergies and it was made, it didn't have butter, but it was made with oil and shredded beets. It is so good. So I made it last night. I made some chocolate frosting to put on it. My daughter did it up with some sprinkles. It wasn't anybody's birthday. I just wanted to make chocolate beet cake, so I did. Okay. I think I got most of them. So now we're going to add the olive green leaves. Okay, let's add some water to this. And we're going to quickly dab them in. Do you guys find it relaxing to watch people color? I love it. So if you have your Stampin' Up! catalog handy, you can pull it out and turn it to where the embossing folders are and just like look through and see what other folders you could do this watercoloring technique with. I think the script one would look really good and that Pinewood Planks that I was talking about earlier using with the poinsettias, I think that would look really good um, with some watercoloring. You could use the Pinewood Planks folder and emboss it and then you could go over it with you know a light wash of gray or any of our grays or any of our browns. Then you could swipe a, drag a Whisper White ink pad over it. That would look really good. I might have to try that. I don't have that folder though. But I can always order it. Right? Okay, let's add some more. I can see I missed some flowers, but I'm not going to worry about it because part of this is actually going to get covered by my card elements. I'm going to show you after this the way I colored a couple um, daisies that I, I stamped. There are so many ways to color, so I hope you guys aren't intimidated by coloring. Um, I know some people don't enjoy it, but there, this is just one way to color. You can color with alcohol markers, you can color with our stamp and write markers, you can color with watercolor pencils. Um, I know we have stamp sets that the stamps themselves will fill in and color the images for you. So there's so many ways to add color. All white cards look pretty too. And they've got little fancy touches on them. They look pretty. Okay, we're almost done with this. Thanks for sticking with me. Oh, I'm in love with this. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh, doesn't that look great? And you totally do not have to be a fancy schmancy artist to do this. It's going to look good, I promise you close my ink pads because after doing that, I don't want to drop it in it, especially in Blackberry Bliss. Oh my word. That would be a disaster. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. This is so pretty. Let's bring in all the other pieces. Okay. We are now going to set that aside and dry it for a little bit. It's really not that wet. I'm going to stamp a second one of those flowers and this is the set I'm using ornate style. If you need ideas for using this set, just go to my blog, thejoyfulstamper.com and in the search box, type in ornate style. I have done so many cards with this set. I, I love it. I love that little um, corner piece right there. You can use to frame the edges of your card. I love this one for tucking in where there's empty spaces you maybe need filled. I mean, it's just, that's pretty. So you can look for those ideas. Now to get all this color here, I'm going to pull in my Stampin' Write markers. Now, I actually had this question the other day from a friend who also happens to be a customer. 
um, she wanted to color on her red rubber stamps and she was wondering does she use Stampin' Blends or does she use Stampin' Write Marker? You use this one, the Stampin' Write Marker. Reason being, the blends are filled with alcohol ink and they will ruin that red rubber. So this one, for coloring on your stamps, is a no-no. You want to use your Stampin' Write Marker. And I find it easiest to use the brush tip. So I'm actually going to brush these petals here with the Blackberry Bliss marker. And then I'm going to bring in my old olive Stampin' Write marker and I'm going to color the stem. And then I'm going to use a Calypso Coral marker and dot the center of this flower. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give a little breath on it. <sighs> Just breathe on it a little. It'll re-wet that marker ink. And I'm stamping it on Whisper White cardstock. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a blender pen and quickly go over this flower. And can you see how it's picking up the ink from the stamped image and moving it around? Now you want to be careful with a blender pen. You don't go over the paper too many times because it will pill. Thank you, Sharon. You're so you're always so good with the compliments. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this old olive stem. You'll see that this is picking up that ink from the stamped image and moving it around. And then when you want to switch between colors, you don't need to buy a, bl a bl uh, excuse me, a blender pen for each color. Just scribble it on a piece of scratch paper and when it comes clear, you can go ahead and move to another section of your stamped image. And now I'm going to do the circle with terracotta tile. Now the blender pens come in a pack of three and they have a tip on each end. So they'll last you a very long time. Very long time. There's no need to be shy about using them. Your stamping tools don't need to be used, right? Now, yes, yes, I'm going to fussy cut these images. I know that's a dirty word to some of you guys. If I whisper it, will it make it any better? I'm going to fussy cut them. And I'm going to leave the little halo around them because that way when I put it on my card, any uneven cutting I do will be hidden. When you cut right up to the edge of your stamped image, the unevenness that you have, any unevenness you have will be far more noticeable. So when you cut, always leave a white halo around that image. Another tip I have is to turn your paper rather than your scissors while you're cutting. And that will make it so much easier. Um, am I going to go in with this? No, I'm not. I'm going to leave that white spot in there. I'm not even going to try to go in with that. All right. So tell me, what was the last thing that you guys made? Was it a card? Do you like to make scrapbook pages? Um, are you making Halloween decorations or fall decor for your home? Did you make a wreath? I think I might use the gather leaves dies and the gather together set to make a fall wreath like leaves paper wreath and hang it up somewhere in my house I'm really anxious to get started on Halloween but I'm trying to hold myself back I gotta wait for September to come but oh my word can you believe September is on Tuesday I didn't realize that someone was saying something about something on September 1st and I was like, oh, that's a while away. And then they were like, no, it's not Tuesday. And I was like, what? Yeah, I'm losing track. Oh, I, th I see one thing I didn't do. I'm going to go in with my Blackberry Bliss Stamp and Write marker again. And do you see where the artist drew in lines on those petals? I'm not going to recreate the wheel or pretend I know more than the stamp artist. I'm going to take my Blackberry Bliss marker and I'm just going to give real quick flips flicks with that brush tip over those lines that the stamp artist drew. And that's just so I can highlight these petals. Again, I'm not worried about perfection. 
I'm just flicking them lightly with that marker. All right, now we're ready to put this all together. And oh, you're making you're making Christmas cards, Sharon. Wow, you're really ahead of it. I've made a couple, <laughs> but I'm still holding off on it. You are a planner. You are on it. I've got a Blackberry Bliss cardstock, four and a quarter by 11 inches, folded in half at five and a half. I'm gonna have a project sheet for you guys um, that has all the dimensions for this and the list of supplies I use. This is Old Olive, and then this was Whisper White. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of distressing on this with my paper snips. So the thing I'm gonna do this week is if you place a $35 order in my store, shopwithnicole.stampinup.net, I will send you the kits to make this project and the next, next project that I have for us. There's a special August host code I have associated with that so that I know you want this. Um, I will put, it's on my blog, but I'll also put it in the link or in the description to this video. Okay, so I just lightly distressed the edges of this all, old olive piece with my paper snips, and now I am going to go ahead and add some glue. Oh, thanks, Lissa. I have to, I go out of my comfort zone actually when I use more than two colors and a neutral. Not sure why, but. So I always look for ideas everywhere. I look on, uh, I put a color chart sheet on my blog. Um, I, it's from Stampin' Up. I use that for ideas. Um, Mystery Stamping Hour, both with our team event and uh, the one I have on my Facebook page that I run. I gather up color ideas for that too, from that too. So lots and lots of inspiration okay that is going on I love these skinny borders you know cutting things at uh, where you get like a sixteenth of an inch border I like that look all right oh I've got glue on my finger why do I always do that now this is a piece of vellum and I used the ornate layers die to die cut it so that is bundled with the ornate style stamp set so when you buy the stamp and the dies together stamp up discounts at 10% so I have that. Now I'm not going to put adhesive on this yet because sometimes you can see the adhesive through the vellum. I'm going to layer my other elements on it first and that way I'll know where to place the adhesive on this so it's hidden behind those elements. So these flowers are going to go there. And what I did is I took the Ornate Thanks stamp set and I stamped a couple of these greetings on here in Versamark ink, sprinkled on some gold embossing powder and then melted it with my heat tool. And so now I am going to snip them down to the size that I want. And tuck them into my card. Now I think I want this a little bit skinnier. Do you guys ever go through phases with your stamping where you get like really like obsessed or latched onto something? like a certain color combination, a certain stamp set, um, a certain technique. I tend to do it with stamp sets. I will bring out a stamp set and I will make like 10 projects with it and go nuts with it. And then I set it aside. So now I left some little um, extra spaces here because I want to have room to be able to tuck them under, under my flowers. If you read my blog, you know I've said before that I love tucking and layering embellishments. Okay, Stampin' Dimensionals are our friend here. We're going to use them on our flowers. Stampin' Dimensionals are my friend because I like tucking and layering. I'm telling you what. Actually, you know what? I just forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> oh my goodness. Totally went out of my head. Oh, Sharon, the Snowflake, was it Snowflake Splendor Suite? The one that's in the Holiday Mini? Yes. I think that might be the next thing that I go a little crazy for. I actually was thinking of having some kind of like club kit that had projects using 
that sweet because I found that sweet so fun and so easy to work with that I thought it would be fun to make it like in a, a kit format, like a club. So I'm going to play around with that and see what, what I can come up with. Um, so this one's going to actually hang off our card a little bit, but I think what I'll do is I'll put it over the stems. Okay, so we're going to put some more dimensionals on the back of those. So here's a tip for you. Every time you place an order, add on a pack of dimensionals. That way you don't have to worry about running out in the middle of a project and you can just freely use them. So we're putting them all on the back here. And we are peel those. So cross country started. It's fall. I'm a coach. I coach middle school. Let me tell you, I love my team. That age group, seriously, if you ever need to forget about any problems in the world or in your life, middle schoolers seriously are just, they're the best pick me up. I love working with them. They're so goofy. They're so silly. Okay, I will share. And yeah, oh, don't worry. I will be announcing it to the world when I um, make one up. So you will know about it. But the middle schoolers, they just, they make me laugh. Do you guys have a favorite age group that you enjoy being around? I like being with the elderly too. I take one guy grocery shopping every other Tuesday and um, I just, I get a kick out of his stories and all the places he's been in his life and yeah, and I love my middle schoolers and I don't know, life, life feels good right now. This is terracotta tile ribbon and actually it's part of the ornate garden suite. So this comes in a pack with old olive ribbon also. I'm using the terracotta tile spool and I'm just going to make a bow with it. Just a quick little bow, and then I'm gonna fuss with it and play with it, and then bring out my glue dots, which are my favorite way to attach ribbon to my cards. And I'm gonna stick that, I'm gonna stick it down here, and then I gotta trim, trim my tails. Okay, so I don't watch much TV, but my dad told me about this show called Cannonball. It reminds me of Wipeout, if you guys ever have seen that. It's like a water-themed thing. And now, now we're going to glue this on and add some champagne rhinestones. I haven't used these in a while, and I forgot how stunning they are. I love champagne as a metallic color. So Cannonball, it's all about these water sports. <laughs> I want to cut that some more. And... It's quite funny and amusing to watch them. It, I mean, it's like a water park on steroids, only they're playing for $10,000. I think it's on USA. All right, now I'm actually going to use Snail, which in the catalog is now, um, it's actually been improved, and it's called Stamp and Seal. So Stamp and Seal is what you would use if you're shopping from the new catalog, or if you still have some, a supply of Snail on hand, you can pull that out too. And I'm going to apply it to my vellum where my elements are so that they're a little hidden. Okay, and I'll put that right in the middle of this card like this. And burnish it a little bit to get it to stick. And now we're going to add some champagne rhinestones. Yeah, they do listen. They add a really nice subtle gleam. Okay, I'm going to look at my original card so that I know where I put them because I liked where I put them the first time, so... Why think that hard, right? If I like the way I did it the first time, I'm going to do it the same way again. And let's put a couple more up here where I had them before. I'll tell you what, it's really freeing to just use your stuff knowing you can always get more. Just play with it and have fun. All right, so that is the embossed watercolor technique. Oh, I love it. I hope you guys do too. Oh, you know what? I actually started a Facebook page. Um, I sell my cards. So I have a Facebook page called Handmade Cards by the Joyful Stamper. And I have them categorized in albums by like birthdays, sympathy, whatnot. I'm putting these on there for sale. So yeah, I think they'll go. 
All right, that was project number one. And remember, $35 order in my store using my August host code. I will send you the kit to make this project and the next one that we're going to make. Okay, I'm gonna be honest here. This next project, I actually didn't make a sample for yet. We are winging it, which is a little scary on a Facebook Live, so please go easy on me, <laughs> okay? Um, if it doesn't turn out so great, the technique is what we're focused on here. So I was participating in these challenges on a place called Split Coast Stampers. It's like stamping heaven on the internet. And they have these challenges this week called Dare to Get Dirty. And it's not at all as bad as it sounds. It's really fun. It's all stamping related. And one of the challenges was to use this technique called die cutting shadowing. And that's the technique I'm going to do for this card, okay? And I'm going to use the Timeless Tropical set. I know I've used this set like a million times, but this palm tree right here, I thought um, would work really well with this. So we're going to do that. So I'm pulling out my pieces, and I'm going to use Soft Suede. I know this paper was in the last catalog. Um, we've got lots and lots and lots of designer series paper, and again, it's the technique we're focused on. The stamp set and the dies that cut these pieces out are all still available. Timeless Tropical set in the Tropics dies, again, on my project sheet. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on my card, but before I do that, I want to sand it. And I think I'll bring in my watercoloring chipboard here. I'm just, I got these, these are nail files actually, emery board blocks. I got them from the Dollar Tree and I like them because I, they're easy to hold. I'm going to just gently rub this along the edges. And I love that, if you could see that faded white line there. That's the look I'm going for by sanding this. I want it to look worn, like, I don't know, a comfortable Hawaiian shirt. I'm sorry, does this sound like nails on a chalkboard for anybody? I apologize. It'll be over soon. Ooh, this is looking good. The paper dust is flying. Okay, we've got the look. Do you see that? That worn edge there? Mm. This is the kind of stuff that makes my heart go pitter patter. Okay, I need the right glue here. Okay, we're gonna glue this down. Now, here's the thing, you don't have to use designer series paper. Another option is actually to take your embossing folders and emboss a piece of cardstock and you can use that as your background too. So you've got choices here. Okay, we're gonna put that one on. So if you just jumped on, I'm Nicole Steele. I'm the owner of the Joyful Stamper and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and we're having some fun right now. Every Thursday I go live at 11 o'clock Eastern time to do some stamping. All right, now this is a, an embossed piece of Whisper White cardstock, and I used the Coastal Weave embossing folder, which was in the last um, occasions catalog. Use whatever embossing folder you, oh, you want. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I have a sponge dauber. I want to try and brush a little color on that. I'm not sure if I should use sea foam or soft suede. I'm leaning towards soft sea foam because I don't want this to stand out too much. So... I don't know. Do you guys have an opinion? Ooh, I'm kind of leaning toward this, and I know there's a lag with um, Facebook Lives. So, hmm, does anybody have an opinion before I jump in? <laughs> Maybe you're seeing a better option than I am. I really like this color. I like the soft green of it. I would like to paint a room in my house this color. Oh, hi, Linda. I didn't even know you were on here. Sea foam. You're saying soft sea foam. Okay. So I'm going to use a sponge jobber, and I like the control that I have with these because I can put them right on my fingertip. And I'm going to dab some on there. And let me pull out my scratch paper here and make sure I don't have it too dark. I'm just going to lightly, lightly go over this 
embossed piece of cardstock. And the reason I'm doing it very lightly is because I don't want it to get deep, deep down into the crevices of this. I want it to just pick up the embossed design. Okay, I'm liking how this turns out. Linda, I think that was a really good color choice. I like that. I'm going to stop. My motto with card making is more is more. But is it always more? I don't know. Sometimes I don't know when to stop. Oh, look at that. Mm. Love it. Now we're going to bring in a piece of flirty flamingo. And here's where our die cutting shadow technique is going to take place. So I've got this cardstock right here, flirty flamingo. Bring in whatever die you want, okay? Um, I like the solid frame ones. I think they work best for this technique. So I went and picked something like this pineapple with all those intricate pieces. Um, this, oh my goodness, hibiscus, okay? Is that how you say it? This would be a good one too. So anything with a solid frame I think would work really good for this technique. We're gonna die cut this out from the middle of that flirty flamingo piece. So let's bring back in the awesome stamp and cut and emboss machine. Okay, so I'm gonna be honest here. You guys know, I've had a cuddle bug for 17 years almost, 17 years. I am not somebody that buys the latest and the greatest just because it's new, I'm really not. But I bought this because I wanted to be able to use the 3D embossing folders and share in your bedroom soft sea foam. Oh my gosh, that would be so relaxing to go to every night. Um, but I bought this so I could use the 3D embossing folders. It's amazing. I love this machine. So impressed with the embossing. The die cutting right through with intricate dies, one pass, cuts everything. So I'm going to use the sandwich for that's using with thin dies. So I've got my base plate. I've got the die adapter plate, which is plate number two. See, they're numbered. And now I've got cutting plate number three, which, yes, the more you use it, the more you're going to get all those cut marks in them. That's okay. It's just a sign of a very creative person. And I'm going to place my die in the middle, and then I'm going to put the other second cutting plate number three on top and I'm gonna run it through my machine. Do you see how smoothly that goes through? Those rollers just pull it right through. Okay. And then when we're done, we're gonna fold this up just like that. Okay, now I have die cuts. I still need to get more stuff out of the way. So now I have this die cut. Let's bring everything else back in. That is actually going to go in the center of my card like this. And what we're going to do is what I did ahead of time is I went ahead and I stamped the tree two more times on pieces of um, flirty flamingo and I die cut them. So I have a total of three die cut pieces. The first one came from my original flirty flamingo piece. Your big shot's in really good condition. Yeah, I've heard other people say that to that their big shots work. And you know what, if something's working, yeah, you just stick with it, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Um, so I die cut this piece from this one, which is gonna go on my card, and now what I'm gonna do is this, I stamped this one in early espresso, and I stamped this one in soft suede because I wanted to see which one I liked better. I like the soft suede better. This was just a little bit too dark for me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stack them. The reason I'm gonna stack them is because I like the extra height that that gives to my die cut pieces. So I'm gonna put some glue on here, if it comes out of the bottle. Squeeze it on there like that, and I'm gonna match it up, and I'm gonna glue that on there. So I'm gonna do something at the end of this card. <laughs> it's making me a little bit nervous because honestly, it's not something, I think I've done it maybe once on my card before. Can you believe that? We don't even know what it is yet. Um, so I don't know how it's going to turn out. I may not be very good at it, but we're going to try it, okay? We're going to try it. Never be afraid to try something new. What's the worst that happens, right? It's paper. Someone's going to like the card. Let's glue this piece down. Oh, you know what? I want to put linen thread around that. My stamping friend. So yeah, actually, yes, I am going to glue that down, and then I'm going to wrap some linen thread around it. So do you have like a go-to 
um, stamping, I don't know, embellishment, ribbon, whatever, like something that you just, when all else fails, you know if you slap that on your card, it's going to look good. That would be linen thread for me. I probably could put in an order and get Hostess stamp or get Stampin' Rewards from it just by ordering linen thread. That's how much I use it and how much I love it. And I'm going to be generous. I'm going to wrap this around two times. Maybe three? No, we'll stop at two. Gotta stop. And then we're going to tie it in a bow. And I like to hold the knot down in the center while I adjust it to get it the way I want it to. All right, now I'm going to make sure that that, yep, that's going to show still. All right, and we're going to snip that off. Okay. Now this is going to go on this like this. And I actually debated if I should emboss it with this folder right here, but I think what I'm going to do instead is take this. And let me find a sponge. Sorry, I hit the camera. Ooh, things are falling everywhere. Okay. I'm going to sponge the edges of this. Oh, I can hear my dog growling at the top of the stairs. She wants down here to me. I don't think anybody's up there to let her down. She is like Velcro on my side, let me tell you. And I think that's good. Yeah. Okay, we're going to let that be. Know when to say when. We're going to put this down with dimensionals. Okay. For making this on the fly, so far I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. Oh, the iridescent pearls. Sharon, I think I have that. These right here, right? They're in the Halloween, the Magic in the Night Suite. I haven't even opened them yet, but oh, you're right. They are pretty. I like all the different colors in them. There's like greens and some purples and blues. Ooh. So many fun toys to play with. Okay. I got a lot of driving to do tomorrow. My 15 year old suddenly has a very, very active social life. And after getting a year and a half break because my older two girls drive, <laughs> I'm now driving her everywhere. Like tomorrow, I'm in the car almost all day just taking her places. But you know what? It's time I get to spend with her. So how in the world can I complain, right? I, and I had a break. I had a break from it. So time to get back in the saddle. All right. Now I have those three die cut pieces stacked together. I am going to slightly offset them from what I cut out in the middle there. Just like that. Okay. So it creates like a little shadow effect there because you have it slightly moved over. And now what I'm going to do is I die cut. These are also um, from the In the Tropics dies. It's this die right here. It looks like it would cut them attached together, but it's they're not. They'll die cut out as three separate flowers. And I used Coco Cabana. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave these as Coastal Cabana. I'm not going to sponge them or do anything to distress them. And we're just going to put them on our card. Now I will tell you something that I sometimes do. If I'm not really sure where I want to put, let's say sequins or something like these flowers, sometimes I will just pick them up as a group and I will just drop them, release them right over my card and wherever they fall is where I'll glue them. And that way it keeps me from thinking a little bit too hard about it. I also die cut this Aloha from those dies and I'm going to peel them off of this dryer. I left them on the dryer sheet so that I could, um, so they wouldn't get lost. We're going to use a fine tip glue pen to glue those. 
because they're so skinny. Now another option for intricate dies like this is we have multi-purpose adhesive sheets. So you could stick your die cut cardstock to that adhesive sheet paper, run it through your machine with the dies, and then it basically turns this into a sticker where you can just peel it off and stick it right on your project. Now my original intent was to actually do this. Just have these, um, you know, like three separate times on there, but I'm thinking it might be a little too busy with all these flowers. So I could always stack these or I could just put one on there too. Um, I don't know. Kind of. I think maybe we'll just, we'll do that. Oh, okay. I like that. That looks good. See, that just kind of fell there, didn't it? Use the iridescent pearls with the snowflake DSP. Oh, I never thought of pairing those together. But yeah, they both have that shimmery blue to them. Okay, so I'm going to glue that down. I'm going to put a little block on it to hold it in place. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue those flowers down. I'm not going to use the fine tip glue for those flowers. You can use dimensionals or you can use your, um, your liquid glue and just stick them down. Now the center of these actually get die cut too, but they're coming off um, as I'm applying the glue. But I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, and then we've got one more here. Oh my gosh, my dog is really trying to get my attention up there. <laughs> really trying to get my attention. Okay. Now, here's the thing I'm going to do that I really haven't, I haven't played with this enough. Okay, so we have in the catalog shimmer paint, and I don't know if I can find my bottle of it. There's frost white, yeah, here it is, frost white, and there's champagne mist. Okay, so I have champagne mist. So if you shake this up and open it up, and if you take a Stampin' Spritzer and take this out like this, you can pour a little bit into this. I already have some in here, so I'm not going to do it, but pour a little bit into your Stampin' Spritzer. Then take 70% rubbing alcohol. Now, you can get rubbing alcohol. It's like, what, 91% or something? But that will clog this little spray nozzle here. So make sure it's 70% rubbing alcohol that you pour in here. So just fill that up. And then, oh, I just splattered it everywhere. Now I'm going to have a shimmery desk. Okay, so it's frost white, and we've got champagne mist. And then what I do, rather than shake this, I roll it between my hands. And I think that keeps the nozzle from getting clogged even further. And now what I'm going to do is pull out an old paper pumpkin. Isn't that cute? That was the March kit. An old paper pumpkin box, and I'm going to put my card in here. Okay, I'm going to stay, I'm going to shimmer shimmer this up. Um, I'm going to hold it a little farther away so I try not to get blobs on it. I want like a fine mist over this. And let's spray. Whoop. This is not spraying. Oh, here we go. Okay. That is shimmery. I know it's hard to see on the camera. And if you get it where you really don't want it, I'm pretty sure you can just kind of dab it a little bit. Okay. Oh, look. I like that shimmer. I'll have to refill my bottle and try to do a little bit more with that. So that is called die cut shadowing technique where you die cut it straight from your, your background and you offset it a little bit. And then also today we did embossed watercoloring, okay? So I have two things to tell you. First of all, if you place a $35 order, I will send you the kits to make these two cards. Also too, 
I used some retired supplies to make another version of the die cut shadowing technique, but I have this stuff left. So I will throw this into your kit too. So just go to my store, shopwithnicole.stampinup.net, use the August um, host code, um, $35 order. I will send you the kit to make these two projects plus this bonus one. Also too, for sharing my video, since we're on the topic of embossing folders, sharing my video, hit that share button and then in the comments type the word shared so that I didn't I know you did that and I will do a drawing to win this tasteful textile 3d embossing folder um, I'll announce the winner next Thursday's live and I mentioned or in the beginning of this program this was one of my favorite so I have an extra one to give away so again just hit the share button type shared in the comments so I know you did that and then I will do the drawing because I it helps me so so much and I really, really appreciate it when people do that and are willing to help me. And I just, I don't know, I just love talking to other people and just connecting with them in this way so much. I just want to show my appreciation. So thank you again for joining me, guys, for this uh, more than a happy half hour. But I will see you guys next Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, right here. Bye.